whatever you do, I thank you guys for watching and up until the next video, have a rotated, that was fucking cringy, day. See ya. Papa Flamby's Advent Calendar. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. So, Papa Flamby's Advent Calendar once again, and we're going to derive the rotation matrix in two dimensions today. For what would you need something like this? Well, you need it for, for example, rotating vectors or matrices in two dimensions, but you could also, I don't know, um, rotate, come here, my boy, this piece of shit in two dimensions. So getting new information from this to this position, or you can also rotate your mother, for example. I really don't care, but we are going to derive it today using simple trigonometry, you could say. So let's say we have a vector the simplest case in two dimensions lying somewhere in the xy plane. And you see it just has a certain length r and it traces out an angle. And you see we can construct a vector which tells us a little bit about this tip up here. The, the little tip of the, of the vector. So we have uh, some r vector corresponding to an x and y coordinate. How can we rewrite this a little bit? Well you see what we can do we can construct a little triangle, a right one at that, with a certain y length and an x length. And you see now we can just simply use Papa Pythagoras. I have made videos on polar coordinates before, not going into detail, uh, detail about this now. So we can turn this, this x coordinate, into r times the cosine of phi, and this right here into r times the sine of phi. So watch my video about this. It's really quite easy to derive. Okay, Coolio. Now let's imagine we have this vector right here in this position and now we're going to rotate it upwards. It really doesn't matter how you rota rotate it. So you see, then we are going to end up with, well, this has been our original vector tracing out a phi. We are going to fix it in place right here and just rotating it upwards. And one little observation is that our length of the vector doesn't change. It just stays R because we have fixed it in place. It doesn't change at all. Okay, and now I want you guys to notice that this new vector traces out a new angle. And this angle is, well, phi plus some other angle, you could say. Let's say theta. And I'm going to write theta like this because this right here is fucking stupidly stupid to write. <laughs> Fight me, Fematica. Bar theta is better. And also you see it, this thing right here has another little tip up here. And this right here, this new tip is corresponding to a different x and y coordinate. Let's call them x prime and y prime. And similarly, we have a new vector, r prime vector, corresponding to x prime, y prime. It's now nothing but similar, similarly up here. So r times the cosine of phi plus theta, and then r times the sine of phi plus theta. And the cool thing is we can re rewrite this right here a little bit. So the magic is going to happen in a few minutes. Okay, we have derived an addition theorem for this right here, for the addition of angles and cosine and sine. So this is going to end up with r times cosine of phi, cosine of theta, minus sine of phi, sine of theta. I'm going to bring the r right here normal case you would have this in parentheses but I'm going to bring the R to every factor and similarly we have a different addition theorem for here. So this is sine of phi cosine of theta plus um, yeah no let's bring it in a different order it doesn't matter it's just additive so let's put sine of theta cosine of phi right here and similarly we have R times the sine of phi cosine of theta. I have put them like this on purpose. You will see in a second. And here's where the magic is going to happen. You see r times the cosine of phi and r times r times the sine of phi corresponds to the x and y coordinate. So let's turn this into x times the cosine of theta minus y times the sine of theta x times the sine of theta and then we have plus y times the cosine of theta. And this is really, really cool. You know why? Because this right here is exactly 
just the multiplication of a two by two matrix with a little vector with two columns. So you see, if you know a bit about matrix multiplication, we can turn this right here into cosine of theta, negative sine of theta, sine of theta, cosine of theta, times x and y. And this is already it, to be honest. So you see, um, if you multiply vectors with matrices, you're going to take this vector, put it up here, and add those two together. So x times cosine of theta minus sine of theta times y. Exactly this right here, same spiel with the other column. And then we are basically done. So this is our new R vector prime. And we can identify this right here as our rotation matrix. And to conclude this video, our rotation matrix with respect to our new angle theta right here, this bad boy, so our angle of rotation, is nothing but cosine of theta, negative sine of theta, sine of theta, cosine of theta. And this thing right here is pretty fucking cool. You know why? Because this right here is just e to the i theta, but in matrix form. I'm going to make a video on that in the near future. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. You can also support the channel by sharing those videos. Please share them everywhere and just watch them. This already helps the channel a lot. You can buy those features I created or support the channel on Patreon. Whatever you do, I thank you guys for watching and up until the next video, have a rotated... That was fucking cringy. Day. See ya. Macht was!